Hello, 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 my beautiful Bravo lovers. What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute since we've sat down and talked about The Real Housewives. I am so sorry that we missed last week. I had a lot going on, but I'm back now, ready to go, ready to break down Beverly Hills. We've got a lot to discuss. So let's get into it. We are going to talk about this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 11, Episode 15, The Dinner Party from Hell, Part 2. Now, we all know what happened last week. Garcelle and Dorit went head-to-head. -head. Dorit called Garcelle a bully and throws jabs at people. And Garcelle thinks that Dorit talks too much, which, where's the lie, people? Where's the lie? And then Sutton and Erica, they go head to head. Erica calls Sutton a small town girl and to shut the F up and to not worry about her reputation and I'll go head to head with you any day. Blah, blah, blah. And then Sutton says, don't project your problems onto me. Keep them to yourself. Oof. Things are heating up, y'all. Things are heating up over in the 90210. So let's get into it. This week's episode of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, we open it up with Dorit showing off her new bridal line. She's doing a little fashion show for PK. Also, please note the signed Baby Grand piano in the background for Dorit's birthday back from what? I think it was 2017. Trying to figure out what that signature is. I think it might have just been Boy George or something like that. She's best friends with Boy George. He probably got her that piano. What a birthday gift, though. What a birthday gift. Anyway, I digress. So in the process of Dorit showing off the dresses to PK, he jumps into the whole creative process and begins to make names for all of these dresses. So let's get into the showcasing of the dresses and the names that PK came up with. First up, we've got The Pearl. Next up is The Moment. Then we have The Actress. And ending it out, we have The Woman. Now, I'm not going to lie. I am a fan of these dresses. They are... Mwah. They're pretty good. Dorit does know what she's doing. And PK should be part of the creative process more often because these names, I'm not mad at them. They're pretty unique. They're pretty amazing. Bravo, PK. I did enjoy seeing more of Dorit with her personal life, her business, her journey, her picking fights with everybody. I like to see it. She's interesting again. Thank you very much. It was a very slow start with Dorit. Kind of felt as if, what is the point of her? She's a little boring. But she's stepping it up. She's working for that paycheck. She's earning that diamond. I love to see it. So her and PK then are discussing everything going on with Erica and her issues with Garcelle. She says that she doesn't feel like she talks too much. Dorit feels like she doesn't talk too much. Come on. Is the Pope a Catholic? Dorit does talk too much. Yes, she does. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. So we then move over to Sutton. She is renovating her brand new house, the house that she's going to move into when she leaves Kyle's house. I'm going to say it though, this house is gorgeous. I am really loving it. It's giving me Italian vibes and it's a cool, cool 5.3 million dollar house. This house is 6,000 square feet, four bedrooms, five bathrooms. She is completely renovating the entire house. Sutton is living her best divorced single lady life. She has a new house. She has a new Bentley. She has a thriving business and now she is a diamond holding cast member of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Get your life, Sutton. Get your life. So Kyle and Sutton then are sitting in the backyard and Sutton brings up Erica. She said, when I saw that dang god doo-doo nail pointing at me. When I saw that daggum doo-doo nail pointing at my face. <laughs> yeah, not the doo-doo nail. Not the doo-doo nail. Sutton is pissed that Erica called her Miss Small Town and worried about her reputation. Sutton feels as if her and Erica were bonding and now Sutton is mad and feels hurt. I think they both feel hurt and 
I think Erica is projecting everything onto Sutton. There, I said it. I personally understand where Sutton is coming from with her reputation. She is sitting on boards. I had a whole discussion about this in my last review. You know, when you are surrounding yourself with someone that is going through very serious legal issues, you kind of have to protect yourself. You don't know what you are in for. You could be dragged into the court to testify about what was said to you. Erica is going through very serious legal shit. And whether or not she's directly implicated in it or directly knows what's going on, she's involved. And there's no other way around it. Whether we want to say that she's not or not, it, there's no other way around it, y'all. There's just no other way around it. And Sutton and all the other ladies, to be honest, need to protect themselves. There, I said it. So I get where Sutton is coming from. I really do. So Sutton tells Kyle that she is ready to have a hardcore conversation with Erica and tell Erica that she isn't buying it. Sutton thinks that Erica may not have known exactly what was going on within Tom's law firm, but she does think that Tom told Erica that the gig is up. Take care of yourself. It's been a nice ride. And I honestly can see that happening. I really do. I do think that Tom gave Erica a heads up and that is why this divorce happened. I think Tom went to Erica and said, listen, I'm in a lot of trouble. Things are going south really quickly. This is going to get bad. Please protect yourself. Get out now while you can. I will do everything to protect you. This is the story that you need to say. And she is running with it. I think that Tom calls Erica every day. I think that they do speak every day. And there I said it. That is my gut instinct. Sutton says that Erica has already lied once regarding the car crash and it's a big red flag for Sutton. And then Kyle chimes in and says, well, yeah, I don't like liars. I mean, do any of us though? And Sutton says, well, she lied to y'all once. Erica told Kyle that Tom broke his ankle in the car crash, but there was so much more going on to it. Tom was unconscious for 12 hours. She found him. He was thrown out of the car. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing, and Erica embellished the story. She made it up. There, I said it, people. I said it. Sutton then says, why do I think Erica has lied about the car crash and the head injury? Sutton says it's because it's part of Tom's defense. No lies detected. Kyle then asks Sutton if she thinks it's possible that the divorce was a sham. And Sutton says, well, I don't think it's impossible. Things look fishy here. Then Sutton says, I think Erica is acting as if she is sweet and innocent. Emphasis on the word acting. And then Sutton says this, which is totally accurate. Erica made a deal with the devil, and at the end of the day, karma always, always comes back. It comes back bigger and badder than what you originally did. There, I said it. Here's the thing. All these ladies are speaking a really big talk behind Erica's back and have really big opinions about what they feel about what is happening. But no one, I repeat this, no one is really saying this to Erica's face. They're all putting on a good face and trying to stay in Erica's good graces for whatever way or reason that's what's happening here. So now let's move over and go over to Crystal. She is hosting an afternoon lunch for the ladies, Erica, Kathy, Garcelle. And I just want to point this out. Now, I'm willing to eat anything once, within reason, but Crystal takes the cake. She said that when she was in Peru, she ate a guinea pig on the side of a road. No, ma'am. I have boundaries that I am unwilling to cross. She said that the guinea pig tasted like chicken. The more you know, people, the more you know. Also, I think it's really nice that Crystal is teaching her kids about the Chinese culture. They're learning how to speak Chinese. And I think we all should be connecting to where we came from. Because at the end of the day, we are all children from immigrants and we need to know what our roots are. 
Yes, at the end of the day, we're American, but we all have ancestors that migrated to this country and we should all know our background, know where we came from and be connected with that. And I love that Crystal is engraving those values into her kids and they are learning about their background, their Chinese heritage. It is nice to see. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So now everyone is sitting down to eat and the topic of Dorit comes up and Crystal asks Garcelle how she is feeling about the other night. Here's the thing. It's nothing that hasn't been said before, but Kathy nails it. She says it hurt her feelings, but you know what? We've all joked about it. We've all joked about it before. Dorit does talk too much. I just want to say something really quickly that just popped into my head. Last week, Dorit called Garcelle a bully for just saying what is on her mind and calling it like it is. But Erica can scream and shout and say nasty things to Sutton for just speaking her mind. But no one's calling Sutton a bully. But we're so quick to judge and call Garcelle a bully. I'll let you be the determining factor of why that is. I don't need to say it. We all know why Dorit said that. Put two and two together, y'all. Put two and two together. So Erica then shares that she is so upset with Sutton because she feels as if Sutton is kicking Erica when she's down and how Sutton doesn't want to be associated with Erica because of her reputation and it doesn't want to be tarnished. She thinks that Sutton is just being judgmental and selfish. Kathy then chimes in and says that Sutton cares about her social standing at the country club and that she's from a more conservative background. Kathy then says, well, guess what? I have good news and I have bad news. Nobody cares what you have to say. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. My family's just so happens to be all out there, which is true. You know, Kathy Hilton, we all know about Paris. We all know about everything about the Hiltons, okay? We just do. And Erica then says, I'm members of the same country club as Sutton, and I've never heard of her name. And Crystal then piggybacks and says, yeah, I've never heard of her name either. They're all saying how, oh, Sutton only cares about her social graces in the country club. I don't even know who she is. Here's what. I didn't know who you were, Erica. I didn't know who you were, Crystal. Kathy Hilton is the only one, the only one that I actually knew who she was before coming onto this show. Before the show, I didn't know who Erica was. I didn't know who Crystal was. I didn't know who Garcelle was. So y'all need to thank the show for making your names household names. Just remember where you came from and what put you on the map. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Bravo. Thank you very much. Erica and Crystal, they think that the reason that Sutton does this is because she's insecure and she doesn't understand social cues. Crystal says that she thinks Sutton is awkward. And they're all saying this in front of Garcelle. So then we move over to Kyle. Her and Mauricio are having a birthday moment for Kyle because it's her birthday. And I do have a genuine question. Why do rich people like caviar so much? Serious question. Someone let me know what is the hype about caviar because I am dying to know. Let me know. Comment below. So now it's the day of the dinner party from hell. All of the ladies are getting glammed and ready. Kyle calls Kathy at her house and guys, Kathy has an answering service. Good afternoon, Mrs. Is Mrs. Hilton in? It's her sister Kyle calling. Good afternoon, Hilton resident. This is the level of rich that I aspire to be. So now we move over to Kathy's house and she is prepping for the big disaster of a dinner party. And guys, Kathy has a freaking butler. Again, she is rich, honey. She is rich. And this is how you host a dinner party. Take notes, ladies, take notes. The staff at the Hilton residence is out of control. Kathy has an entire hospitality staff. Again, rich, honey, rich. 
This is Beverly Hills. So all the ladies are arriving to Kathy's house one by one. Everyone is sitting in the living room, eating appetizers, enjoying cocktails, having small talk. So now we are going to talk about the dinner party. Buckle up. Let's get into it. Sutton, she goes right up to Erica and asks Erica if she wants to talk. Sutton wants to discuss what happened at Kyle's house and she wants to share her side of the story and to make sure that Erica is okay. And then Erica goes, what are you trying to do? She says, I don't need to clear the air with you. You've made it clear your position with me. You've made it very clear. Sutton then says, so do you want to talk with me or not? And Erica responds, no, I do not want to talk to you. I have enough problems and your opinion of me does not matter. And then walks away. Erica is being so freaking cold. Everyone then at the table is so confused about like what freaking happened. And Sutton goes, I just wanted to talk to her. I felt that it would be best if she heard it from the face who said it. And then Sutton goes, not that anyone else at this table is going to do that. Just me, which is cool. Burn, Sutton. Burn. That was a burn and I loved it. Also, why does Rinna have a dang bell? That's for you. No, that's for why you. Why do you have the bell? Only that's you for you. Bell. Only you have the bell. Why does Lisa have the bell? I never had a bell. And that butler snatched that bell so quickly from her. This is my job. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and again, people, why do rich people like caviar so much? A whole freaking caviar pie. So then Dorit, she starts to talk about her issues with Garcelle and Kathy cuts her off and says, let's just have a nice dinner. When we eat, we want to enjoy it and makes a zip your lips motion. <laughs> I died. Freaking Kathy Hilton for the win. And Rinna though is playing dirty. She has this bell again and decides to play like a dinner game. And she says, if you have anything you want to say or work out, you ring the bell and we'll start with Sutton. Like, come on. I feel like that moment was so rude and so uncalled for because Kathy just said she wanted to have a nice dinner party and not bring any drama into it. And then here goes Rinna stirring the freaking pot drudging up all of this crap and being really disrespectful to what Kathy Hilton just requested at her own home. So here's where everything just gets really freaking interesting. Sutton says that she has tried to have a conversation with Erica, but Erica didn't want to hear it and it upset her. Erica said that she wasn't upset and that she just didn't care what Sutton had to say and didn't care what Sutton's opinions of her were. Erica thinks that Sutton just runs her mouth and talks about things that do not affect her at all. And then Erica asks, how does what I'm going through impact you? And Sutton says, I didn't, and I thought that it would, which is a complete freaking lie. Like Sutton does think that what is going on is going to affect her. And she's made it very clear. And Sutton see, keeps saying like, oh, I've had these, you know, opinions about you, but I've softened up about it. It's just really crazy. Erica then says that Sutton didn't need to go out and get panicked over something that doesn't even affect her, which then prompted Dorit to chime in and say that she doesn't agree with that. She says that every time an article is written, these ladies' names are dragged into the article and that Erica knows that. She says that it's human nature to be worried about getting subpoenaed, which is true. Process of association. These ladies are associated with Erica and it's human nature to be worried and concerned about what could happen to them. Then Erica says, there is going to be a day when all of this is behind me and it will be a very sweet day. And I'm going to remember those that were with me, and I'm going to remember those that were against me. 
And Garcelle then says, I just think it's human nature to think, oh, is this going to affect me? And Erica goes, no, it isn't. And Garcelle goes, really? And Erica says, yeah, really. And then here come the tears from Erica. And this is the moment that freaking, freaking got me. Erica is so rude. Garcelle is trying to be a sweet friend, try to ration with crazy, and you can't ration with crazy, and tries to like wipe her tears away, Erica's tears away, and Erica pulls away from her like a freaking sociopath. Like it's freaking crazy. Try to understand. No, come on, come on. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not Garcelle keeps saying, Erica, I'm not here to hurt you, but you have to understand where we're coming from. She's trying to reassure Erica that everyone is just concerned and everyone has concerns of their own about the whole situation. Dorit then says, I will do anything for you. I will protect you to the bitter end. But when you read about the victims and the orphans and the widows, it's very hard to digest. And Erica goes, well, how do you think I feel? I really don't care how you feel, Erica. This is deep. Like, it's really deep. It's not that Tom just, you know, took money from the law firm. No, he took money. Money that doesn't even belong to him, that belongs to people that went through horrific life events and used it for the lifestyle. And Garcelle nails it. Like, what about the victims? What about the victims? There's literally no sympathy, no remorse. And then Erica goes, why are you torturing me? Girl, no one is torturing you. Nobody. Everybody wants answers. Everybody is concerned. She doesn't care that Dorit is concerned. She doesn't care that Sutton is concerned. She doesn't care that these ladies are concerned, not only for their friend, but also for the fear of the unknown and the fear of what is going to happen to them if they are close to Erica. Erica only cares about herself, which is like calling the kettle black because she's over here antagonizing Sutton for caring about her reputation. But here Erica is basically only caring about her reputation. And then bring on the Academy Award performance from Erica Girardi. Look at me, Dorit. Look at me. Come on. Look at my life. Erica says, why are you still talking? Why are you all doing this to me? And the weird Thickest Thieves vibe that I'm getting between Rinna and Erica, it's just really rubbing me the wrong freaking way. During Rinna's entire career on Housewives, Rinna has dragged everyone through the mud for lying or not telling the whole truth. She wouldn't defend Kim. She wouldn't defend Yolanda. She wouldn't defend Denise. She literally dragged those ladies through hell for not owning it, baby, owning it. But now Rena won't even hold Erica accountable and is all, love thy neighbor. Like, come on, I'm not buying this. What is going on here? What is happening? Did Erica give you money, Rena? Did Erica give you a loan? I'm just saying what we're all thinking because in the words of Rena, you better believe I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it. I think, gonna say it. I think Erica gave Rena money or her daughter money for a startup for their brand. I think Erica invested in something. I really do. And we'll leave it at that. Moving on. Erica then tells the ladies, i.e. Dorit, why don't you have some compassion for where I am right now? Erica, I am sorry, girl. You don't get compassion. Where is your compassion for the victims? You don't have any. And then Kyle says, this is about Sutton having an honest conversation with you about the things that she said. And then Kyle goes there and says, Sutton is not being honest. She said that Sutton is saying all this crap about Erica when Erica isn't around but won't say it to her face. Kyle says that out loud, which I am gonna have to agree, Sutton really isn't being truly upfront with Erica. She's being very, very, very wishy-washy. 
Sutton then says that she's softened on all of her points of view. But like, that isn't the case. That's not where Sutton was a few days ago at Kyle's house. Sutton thinks that Erica is lying and Kyle is calling her straight out on it. Honestly, I think a lot of these ladies are having very strong opinions about Erica behind Erica's back about the situation. And Sutton then says to Erica's face that she thinks Erica is lying. But I also think all of these ladies are using Sutton as their scapegoat. But all of these ladies feel the exact same way about Erica. And then Sutton says to Erica, to her face, how do you expect me to believe every single thing? And then Erica loses her mind. You have a lot of nerve. Don't talk to me like that. Or what? Seriously. Or what? <laughs> or nothing. Right, exactly. I Shut the up. You have no idea what you're talking about. Nothing. This is a to be continued episode and I want to leave you with some closing thoughts. I think Erica is being 100% defensive, cold, standoffish, rude, mean, all the things towards everybody. I think that she doesn't like Sutton getting close to the truth. Sutton is getting close to the truth, y'all. She really is, and Erica is getting scared. I also don't like how none of the other ladies are going to tell Erica what they really think. I don't like that Sutton is being very wishy-washy. I don't like it. I wish everybody would just say what they mean to her face. It's just crazy. I don't like any of this. Makes for freaking great TV though, I will say that. But here's the thing, there's no sympathy from Erica about the victims. Erica only cares about Erica. But then why are you yelling at Sutton for only caring about Sutton? I'm just saying. I'm literally just saying. So we will pick up next week, The Dinner Party from Hell Part 2. This is a to be continued episode. Get subscribed to my channel. Comment below. Let's have a discussion about where we are at so far with The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. What are we thinking? Whose team are we on? Erica, Sutton, Garcelle, who? What are we feeling? Let me know. Like this video, share this video, comment below, get subscribed, and I'll chat with you guys next week. We'll talk Beverly Hills then. I'm out. Bye.